Hey, good morning guys, Patrick from V Squared. Today we're gonna be doing an uh, oil change on my BRZ, and for good reason. We're actually partnering up with Grassroots Performance and we're gonna show you guys what actually happens when you put an oil cooler onto your BRZ. Now I know this topic has been spoken over quite a few times in the BRZ community, and you know everybody with an FRS that goes to the track, they typically get an oil cooler if they wanna do some extended sessions. And I just wanna show you guys today what the Grassroots Performance oil cooler specifically can do for your car. We are actually trying to make this as scientific as possible and rule out all of the variables. So this car and the FRS are going to get the exact same type of oil. We're just gonna use like regular old Castrol 0W40 uh, and that's just to, again, make it like accessible for you guys because you know not everybody can easily source Motul or I don't know, Miller's or some of the other more high-end oils. So let's do this test with an oil that most people can get at the regular auto shop. Both cars are gonna get the same oil filter as well. And the only difference between this car and the other is pretty much just the oil cooler, right? Today we're on our way to Shenandoah Motorsports Park to complete the testing for the grassroots performance oil cooler kit. So I've got the 19 row non-thermostatic model on my car right now. Uh, this is what we're gonna be using for testing. And on Demi's car, she's got no oil cooler. So same day, same conditions, uh, same vehicles. The only difference is uh, I have an oil cooler and she does not. We've even got the same fuel. We fuel up at the same gas station. And we're using the exact same oil. So uh, most of the variables are pretty much cut out. And I will be driving her car to complete the testing. So you even have the same driver. So yeah, I'm excited. All that's left is for us to uh, go lapping today, collect the data, and then uh, we'll be reviewing them on screen here with you guys once we're all finished up our processing and analysis on it. And just a heads up, all the information that we're going to be talking about in the rest of this video is actually written in an article that we're going to link in the bio. So check it out. It's pretty nerdy, and I'm sure you guys will definitely fall asleep reading it. So here it is in video form anyway. Okay, on to the data analysis portion of our review for the Grassroots Performance Oil Cooler. Displayed here is the graph of engine oil temperature versus engine RPM. And this is for a hot lap for both of the cars overlaid against each other. Car A is in red, car B is in blue, and you'll see that throughout the following graphs that we're going to present. But basically what we wanted to do was uh, show the relationship between uh, RPM and temperature. We chose engine RPM as our primary variable just because uh, engine RPM has the biggest contribution to the oil temperature since when you're at higher RPMs, you're asking the car to give more fuel and you're giving the car more air with your throttle pedal and therefore the combustion is just hotter at the higher RPMs. And that will have the most direct impact on engine oil temperature. And we also wanted to show the level of aggression of the driver for both cars. Uh, you know, we're not playing any games with the values. We're not trying to drive one car harder than the other to, you know, have an effect or preference on the oil cooler. From the oil temperatures, you guys can probably guess which car has the oil cooler in it, right? The car A here is hovering at about 95 degrees of a plateau for oil temp for the duration of the lap and car B starts off at 111 and slowly climbs and climbs up to about 119 degrees so our delta T here is on average 20 degrees for the duration of the hot lap and if we go back down to engine RPM and just see the level of aggression for both cars and you guys can see I was trying to drive both cars to the best of my ability uh, for both of those sessions I wasn't holding back with any of the cars um, although my car has uh, a little bit more tire than the other and I can spend more time on throttle because I know it's not going to slip, that would actually add even more strain to the oil cooling system uh, just because the engine is experiencing higher temperatures. And you can see my throttle duration for my car, and I'm more confident in it, um, is much longer. And that just goes to show how much work the oil cooler is actually doing. The next graph is a histogram of engine oil temperature versus the RPM. And this is just another graphical representation of uh, the similar data during our hot lap. Um, and you guys can see the, the spread of the overall temperature is tighter on the car with the oil cooler, you know, 91 to 97. And the other car had a slightly higher range from 112 to 119 degrees. As well, the overall density of the plot uh, shows where the oil temperature is most concentrated. So it would be at about 
uh, the 5,600 ish RPM, you can see the most points and they're, they're all hovering at about 94 to 90 degrees where uh, just a few of the streaks here are going up to the, the 96, 97 degree area. As well, when you go into the higher RPMs for car A, uh, there's, there's less data points here, uh, meaning that the higher speed which the car was going was having a direct impact on the amount of cooling that was uh, being experienced by the oil. Whereas here in car B, without the oil cooler, uh, as you reach the higher RPMs, there's actually higher concentration of temperatures uh, going up to about like 119 degrees here in this top corner. So that is showing you that despite the higher speed of travel of the vehicle, uh, the engine RPM is the number one factor in increasing the temperature of the oil. And that's obvious because there's no oil cooling here. There's no air to oil heat exchanger that is having an effect at keeping the oil temperatures down. Uh, there is no overlap in their spread either, which means the oil cooler is consistently keeping the temperatures at about a 20 degree delta, depending on the car's position of the lap and the speed of the travel. Uh, but it is safe to assume about a 20 degree delta, at least in our specific conditions, at, at about 10 degrees ambient temperature. This next graph is the warm-up lap for both cars, and again, it's just temperature versus engine RPM. And what we wanted to show was, you know, how much work is the oil cooler doing when the oil is cold? Uh, this is important because when you're going out for your first lap to warm up the car, warm up the tires, engine oil could also be very cold, right? And you don't want to start stressing out the engine when the oil is not at its operating temperature. And as we can see here at the end of the warm-up lap for car A, the engine oil was under 80 degrees. And that is still under our 90 degree sort of operating temperature. So if you have an oil cooler like this on your car, you're probably gonna wanna ramp up your uh, warm-up lap a little bit harder. You wanna go faster and ask more of the engine to get your oil up to temp. Whereas the car without the oil cooler, you know, it, it shot up all the way to, you know, 97 degrees by the end of uh, the warm-up lap. So that car is properly warmed up, ready for a session of sending. There's also a very obvious difference in the slopes for the, the, the speed of the ramp up. They started at about the same temperature, but the ending temperatures were vastly different. You know, near the beginning of the lap, the delta at about 30 seconds was five degrees. But then by the time you got to the end of the lap, the delta was uh, getting closer to that 20 degree temperature that we were experiencing during the hot lap. Finally, we have a cool down lap here, and we're just showing you that the car with the oil cooler didn't cool down significantly faster than the car without. Their oil cooling rates are just about the same, but the temperature at which both cars started to cool down was uh, obviously vastly different at about 20 degrees. You know, you're not gonna have a faster cool down, at least in our test with the oil cooler, but you will start at a colder temperature to cool down anyway. So you might even turn off your car at a lower temperature and that's always better for engine health. You're not turning off your car with like hot oil still in the system. Thank you everybody for watching our video today. I hope you guys found it educational, nerdy, scientific, all that fun stuff. Be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons if you guys enjoy data validated modifications as much as we do. And stay tuned for future product reviews just like this. Have yourselves a good day. Catch you later.